Ooh, welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on the phone with me right now, Susan Blue, and she played Amanda Shepard in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Hey Sue, how are you doing? Hey Scott, I'm good, I'm good. I'm sorry you don't can't see my face, we're having... Uh, <laughs> internet issues so i gotta get um jason over here and kill somebody <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i'm not gonna lie this is the uh interview i've been looking forward to the most um oh, man well maybe we can also do it another time where i can be on camera absolutely i would love that um yeah you are actually one of my favorite characters in the franchise what I remember now, uh, Lar Park Lincoln yelled at me for this when I told her about when I first saw Friday the 13th Part 7. It was the first horror film I've ever seen that got me into horror, and I was about six years old. <laughs> wow. Yep, and uh, your death hit me so hard that I couldn't believe it, and I was like, oh my god, no! Oh my gosh, <laughs> I know, I got... I got uh, slashed in the back with Terry Kaiser, Kaiser's weed whacker. Yes. Jason's weed whacker, actually. <laughs> yes. But he gave me up. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question I got for you is, how did you get your start into acting? Um, well, it, you know, it's interesting because I'm originally from Minnesota, mm -hmm. and um I had always wanted to, I was in, I was in speech therapy, uh, when I was a kid because I was a controlled stutterer mm -hmm. and I used to say little web booster went to the little web bond and, uh, you know, people made mm -hmm. fun of me, blah, blah, blah. And I, I started doing voices and I started singing on the hearth of my parents' fireplace and putting on little productions and mm -hmm. I always wanted to be an actor mm -hmm. and I went to college uh in Columbia Missouri Stevens College and my third year I was spotted by a talent scout from Screen Gems mm -hmm. and they um signed me to at that point to what was called the Screen Gems talent program mm -hmm. and I was up for a role called Gidget Grows Up so I came out to Los Angeles and the pilot didn't sell mm -hmm. and so here I am in LA and you know I I guessed it on things like Simon and Simon and and um other shows mm -hmm. and started doing a lot of commercials and loved it you know nice. and that and then of course moved into voiceovers uh quickly but my dearest friend of course who's no longer with us anymore uh Anthony Barneo called me up and said you know I want you to read on um as the mother in Friday the 13th. And I said, no, I said, you know, I'm, I'm all involved, all involved in doing animation voices now. And mm -hmm. you no, know, I, I don't know. I, I, and he said, no, please, please. Because they had auditioned tons of women mm -hmm. for this role. And, um, everybody, you know, they didn't, I guess they didn't, Anyway, I came in at the right time. I auditioned and I got the job of Amanda, nice. uh, of uh, the mother. So nice. it was really fun. That's awesome. So how was your death scene filmed and prepped? Um, it was at night. We were in Mobile, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And um, I had heard, you know, that it was my last day of shooting. Mm -hmm. And I heard that, that <laughs> I was going to get killed that night and and uh, so you know I was talking to everybody and and the crew and and they said you know we're gonna have you running in the forest for a while and then after that and they choreographed the scene really closely so mm -hmm. of course I wouldn't get hurt right. actually and um, uh, the director he was just amazing and wonderful and mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looked like I got a weed whacker in my back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So speaking of John Carl Buechler, who directed the movie, how was he as a director? He was phenomenal. He was uh, incredibly artistic, 
really talented. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I think he was in special effects mm-hmm. way before he started directing. Um, and he was also incredibly kind and really good with actors. Mm-hmm. You know, he was really good. Uh, he really was just a terrific director. He let me try stuff and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, we'd play a scene a few times and... Um, nice. You know, Lara was wonderful, and, you know, it was just right. a great, it, it was just a great group of people. Right. Nice. Um, and I remember when I interviewed Terry Kaiser about maybe a year or two ago, uh, he told me about how there was a alligator or a crocodile and rattlesnake wrangler on set. Did you happen to see any crocodiles or rattlesnakes? No, you know, um, uh, I, I never saw one in Alabama. I, it was interesting because the Mardi Gras was going on down there. That was the origin of the Mardi Gras, and of okay. course now it's in New Orleans. But right. um, yeah, no, I stayed away from the swamps. That's good. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so were you on set when they filmed the house exploding at the end of the film? And if so, what was that experience like? Well... It was interesting because I came in, uh, I had scenes to do Mm -hmm. the night before they blew up the house or, Mm -hmm. or, and, um, I was, uh, I looked up in the roof and this crew member was, um, smoking a cigarette (laughs) right outside. right? Right. And inside the house were all of these like wicks hanging down from the, from the ceiling and I went what are those and they said well we're gonna blow the house up and I went you're kidding I mean are they like live he said well they will be and um I didn't see the actual explosion but I guess it was just unbelievable yeah and I think did they use now I don't know if if this is right but uh I I don't know if they use some of the people from apocalypse now to come in and and uh, light the house up. I'm not sure. I heard that, and I think Laura Park Lincoln actually m- mentioned that about the house as well when I interviewed mm-hmm. her. Yeah, but that's crazy that they were actually smoking when they're going to blow this house up. Oh, I know. I know. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I said, you put that out right now. I got really mad because they all did. They were great. The crew was just phenomenal. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, what was the best part about filming Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, and what was the worst? Um, Gosh, the best part was that I was in a Friday the 13th. You yeah. know, it was it's such a cult uh, movie yep. and I had read the script before and thought it was really well written mm-hmm. and well done and you know I I I mean that was the best part for me is to be a part of that that movie mm-hmm. and uh, you know we did all the interiors in LA mm-hmm. and then of course we did all the exteriors and the house yeah. we did uh, the exteriors down in Mobile yeah nice. you know my driving the car and stuff like that that was all done in mobile that's awesome that's so cool so do you have any like memorable stories from the set that you would like to share with the listening audience um well we just laughed all the time (laughs) i mean there was a tremendous amount of, of laughter i know that um uh kevin have you interviewed kevin yet i haven't i want to reach out to him though yeah, he he was great. I don't know how much Lar and Kevin had a chemistry together. Okay. You know, uh, and I used to tease him all the time. Um, <laughs> you know, when yeah. you're gonna kiss her? When you're gonna, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> right. Uh, it was great, and then of course um, uh, the actor that played Jason. I'm blanking on his name. Kane Hodder. Mean, yeah. Yep. He was fabulous and awesome. kind and. You know, he was just such a kind guy. Yeah. And uh, really fun to be around. Nice. I, I remember uh, reading a story about Kane, of when you guys were filming uh, Part 7 and Kane was in full costume. And I guess he was out in the woods or something. He was still in costume and everything. And he always stayed in character. And a little yeah. kid came up to him and uh, he's like, Hey, are you filming that Friday the 13th movie? 
And he looked at him, and he didn't say anything. He just stared at him, and he's thinking of thinking of him. I'm in full costume. Of course I'm filming this movie. So here the kid's like, you are, aren't you? So he kind of lunged at the kid, and the kid goes, oh, shit! And he ran, and he fell. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think oh it might gosh. have I might have seen that in the in Kane Hodder's documentary um that I watched. It might have been in there. I know I read it on somewhere. I think it might have been like under IMDb trivia or something. But oh my god. Right. I was like typical Kane. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Have you interviewed Kane? I haven't. He's very hard to get a hold of. Um I do have his agent's uh contact information and she said to reach out like every couple months, but every couple months he's always busy. Yeah, he's a busy guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the wow. last question I got for you, uh, do you have any other projects that you would like to promote to the listening and the viewing audience? Well, you know, I, I haven't done on camera recently. Mm -hmm. uh, all my stuff has been, you know, animation. Mm -hmm. um, tra I, you know, I was RC in Transformers. Right. And then, of course, I directed the show. And what really kind of got me out of acting was... Um, uh, and into voice acting was a producer called me and said, cause I had done a ton of characters, voice yep. characters. And he said, do you want to direct a little show I've got going? Uh, you know, it's probably not mm -hmm. going to amount to much, but it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nice. And I ended up directing all the actors in that. And nice. that was great. You know, so I kind of, I mean, my, my last claim to fame as far as an on-camera actor, it was really Friday the 13th. Wow, nice. That was what? Uh, that came out in 88. So that was yep. 32, 33 years ago. I was born in 89. Wow. So, yeah, it was, and it's hard to believe we're still talking about it to this day. I know. I yeah. know. You're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you so much, Sue, for uh, joining me, and I definitely wanna would love to set up an interview for Zoom one of these times as well. Yeah, totally. We will. Yes. I, I would love that. And, Absolutely. And uh, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Absolutely. I truly appreciate it. And you have a great rest of your night. I will. You All right. too. Bye. All right, Scott. Bye. Bye.